Hey there everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. We are on day two working in this small business. It's been a while since day one. Some of the reasons are me and my wife having a baby born about a week ago, so kudos on that. If you haven't watched part one video, I really recommend that you go ahead and do that now because this video really lays the foundation of everything we're doing here. By the way, both me and the owner are super thankful to Synology for providing the DS923 Plus free of charge along with hard drives without asking anything in return. They're not sponsoring this video. They didn't ask for certain edits, nothing. It's really admirable. We thank them for that. In part one, we have already configured the Synology. It's already up and running in terms of infrastructure. Everything is backed up, but there's still a major pain point. Computers around this business, some of them super critical. They are not backed up. And we will see in this video how Synology allows us to deal with this pain point. In fact, we are heading down to where some of the critical computers are right now and we'll see exactly why they're critical and how Synology provides us, provides us the tools to mitigate these certain pain points or islands of information. Let's go ahead. Here's exhibit number one, the warehouse computer. Now this computer doesn't hold critical information per se, it's just that this computer, if it's down, the entire operation comes to a halt. Mechanics would come from this work area to the warehouse operator, asking for parts, numbers, serial numbers, prices, everything like that. There's only one station that does that, only this one. If this computer's shuts down or generally goes down, the entire operation goes down. We'll see how to deal with that in a, in a little bit. Exhibit number two, the accountant computer filled with financial data, contracts, everything of that sort, completely not backed up. If data on this computer is lost, it's gone. It's gone. It's dead. Exhibit number three, the reception computer filled with critical data, filled with even pictures for insurance claims. Everything is on this computer. If it's dead, clients cannot be accepted. Data, critical data is lost. Everything right now is not backed up. If it's dead, it's dead. I think you get the point. So let's see what we can do about it. Now, just to be transparent with you guys, as I walk over to this uh, computer that I'm going to be, to be working on, there's a problem here with shooting angles and shooting quality. So I am going to switch when I want to see something, when I want to show you something that's happening on screen. I might switch between the actual computer and a virtual machine that I have here in, in the Proxmox infrastructure that I will be shooting from my editing computer. All right, guys, so I'm arriving to the, it's called here the advisor computer. It's a computer that's not critical and I will be able to sort of play around with in order, instead of fiddling with computers that are really critical. All right, I'm just going to enter the office here. I'm sorry about the echo. So as you can see, there's a computer right here. This is just a plain computer. It's not critical at all. But for all intents and purposes, let's imagine that this is one of the computers that are most critical. So what we'll do right now Again, not a tutorial, just follow along with me. We're going to install the Active Backup for Business agent on this computer. I hope I will be able to do the same steps on a virtual machine so I will be able to screen record it. But I'm going to sit down right now and install the agent, run a backup cycle, and then you will see what I'm going to do in order to illustrate how powerful this tool is. All right, so we switched over to my editing device so I'll be able to show on screen what I'm about to do. The first thing I want to do is open up the Active Backup for Business application and actually go to settings and I want to create a template. A template is just a collection of settings that will be applied to the backup job. Again, you only need to do it once. So let's click on create. Let's name it Windows PC. Applies to, let's say it will be applied to all users. It will be applied to Windows click on next. I don't want to back up the entire device, just the system volume. But again, this is just an example. You decide what's best for you. 
let's click on next backup destination that's fine by me click on next manual or scheduled again that's up to your preferences I recommend to do it scheduled but for this demonstration purposes I will choose manual retention policy again all the settings need to be uh, configured by you based on what's best for your environment click on next and done and actually our template is complete and now we can actually start installing the agent on the computer that we want to back up again this is something that you only need to do once and once you download the installer you can install it on multiple computers so let's go to PC or Mac let's select Windows and click on add device click OK select 64-bit save the installer and once it's done we can actually close out of here and I'm going to switch to a virtual machine I'm going to do the installation all the installation on sorry so bear with me okay so this is my virtual machine I've already logged into it I downloaded the installer and here it is right here so let me double click on it let's click on next accept install there's nothing complicated about installing this agent now the agent is installed but we still need to configure it so let's click on finish and now let's log in and authenticate to our Synology NES so in my case I will type the IP address of my Synology device username and password Let's click on connect, proceed anyway, let's click on OK. Great, we're connected and authenticated and we see that the applied template is the one that we've created which is great. Now based on the settings we have configured on the template, an initial backup might or might not launch but in regards to the actual installation and configuration, we are done. All right, so the agent is installed and configured and based on my template, an immediate backup cycle is now launching. I'm going to let it finish and then you'll see me take out the hard drive, drop it on the floor, introduce a new hard drive and we will be back to where we were when this computer was last backed up, just like that. Let's, let's wait around. Another critical thing you need to do, you only need to do it once and it will be valid for all uh, future cases. Just before you will be able to restore a computer from Active Backup for Business, you need to create an ISO file or a, a USB flash drive and create sort of the restore media in order, in order to facilitate the, the restore infrastructure. In fact, let me go ahead and show you how to do it. It's not a tutorial and I will show you it on my editing computer where I can really record the screen correctly. So let's, let's start. All right, so we need to create the restoration media. In order to do that, I've logged in back to my Synology NES. Let's launch the Active Backup for Business application. Again, let's go to PC and Mac. And now I'll click on Restore Entire Device. And I'll get this prompt here and let's click on Synology Active Backup for Business Media Creator. Now again, this is not a tutorial, I'm going to breeze through it. I do have other videos on my channel that I've went into this topic in depth. I will put a link to one such video in the top right corner right now. Okay, so the creator is being downloaded. All right, so let's right click, extract all. All right, and let's click on Launch Creator. Yes, I'm going to select USB, eh, eh, sorry, ISO media. Let's select the Downloads folder to, to have the ISO created. Let's click Create. It says that we need to download Windows ADK. It, regardless of what Windows ADK is, let's go ahead and click Download. Next, next, accept, 
install. There's nothing really you need to fiddle around with, so let's wait until this installer is over. Alright, so the Windows ADK installation is complete, so let's click on close. Again, let's click on create. Now it's going to actually create the ISO file. So, again, the Windows ADK installation can take a while. For me, it took a good 10 minutes. This process can also take a few minutes, so just let it run. And I'm going to pause the recording again and resume it once this is done. Alright, the ISO file is created. Let's click on finish. And this is our restore media. And just to clarify, yes, this restoration media can be used on other computers. It's not a computer specific kind of media. And as long as you can take this ISO file and maybe use, I don't know, Rufus to burn it onto a physical flash drive, you will have a way to boot into this USB restoration media and restore your computer. All right, we can see that the backup cycle is complete. I'm going to shut down the computer and then I'm going to completely trash the hard drive. Let's go ahead. All right, the computer is shut down. I'm going to do it in front of the camera. So let's go ahead, let, let me take out the hard drive. Here it is. Here's the hard drive. Let's take it outside. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Here it is. One more time. Completely trashed. In fact, I'm going to take it to the garbage. I'm going to throw it right here. It's useless. All right, let me grab a new hard drive and introduce it into this computer. All right, so the new hard drive is in and I'm now selecting a temporary uh, boot, boot device. Now, I've taken the ISO file and extracted the WIM file out of it and uploaded it to an already existing Pixie server in this uh, small business, meaning a network-based a restore operation. If you want to see a video on how that is done, let me know in the comments below. Right now I'm going to select the Active Backup for Business Restore WIM file. Alright, so the Synology Active Backup for Business Restore wizard is already loaded. Even though the hard drive of this computer is completely trashed thrown around outside the office, we're going to go through the restoration process and you will see that after the restoration process, we will be right back to where this computer, to how this computer was before the, uh, when the last backup was taken, down to the operating system layer. So let's go ahead and click next. Let's type the IP address of our Synology NES and authenticate to it. I found the computer by computer name. I found the uh, relevant backup. Let's click on next. Entire device restore, of course. Let's select the time. Uh, we only have one, but le if we had several versions, we could have selected from when we want to restore uh, this computer. Let's click on next. Next. And now we'll, we'll let Active Backup for Business restore to do its thing and we'll resume the recording once this is complete. Alright, so the restoration process finished. Let's click on finish and let's see what happens next. Let's try to restart. Of course, Windows updates at the, at the worst time as always. All right. We got a login screen, which is great. It's a Windows operating system. Let's try to log in. As you can see, we are right back to our Windows desktop. We are restored down to the operating system level. The hard drive, again, I remind you, is thrown away right outside the office. Now, this is a great way to be up and running down to the operating system in a matter of minutes, which is great. Now, I often get asked, 
this tool was never designed to be a computer migration tool. It's not designed for that. So if you're, for example, backing up an HP computer with an Intel processor, and I know, an NVIDIA graphic, graphics card, and you're trying to restore to a Lenovo computer with an AMD processor and an AMD graphics card, the difference in drivers can be so severe that you will be presented with a, bl a blue screen of death. It's not designed to be a computer migration tool. So if you want to replace a hard drive, this tool is great. Even if you're moving from, I don't know, uh, the same vendor but a newer model, the difference in, dri in drivers can be very minimal and the operating system can manage it. But again, it's not designed to be a computer migration tool. All right, guys, so we're actually finished here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to all the critical computers and install the Active Backup for Business agent on them, sorry. Here's the drive, it's still thrown out the old hard drive down here. All right, so what I am going to do right now, the only thing left for me to do in this small business is go and install the Active Backup for Business agent on all the other critical computers, which I already know which ones they are. I'm going to install the agent, make sure it's backed up, and by that, we will be completing the entire work in this small business, and by that, everything, including everything, will be backed up. So a disaster that happened to this small business that, that made me come here will probably not happen again. If you like this video, please give it a like, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.